Welcome to our midweek Advent service as we continue with our series of tidings of comfort and joy as the angels proclaim them to people, proclaiming the birth of Jesus. These tidings came in the midst of fears and confusion, doubt and curiosity, and yet they came to bring comfort and joy to those who the message was delivered to and also for the entire world. Today's theme that we'll be exploring is that of Joseph and his encounter with an angel. I hope that you will enjoy the service, and just a couple of notes before we begin. One is that we continue to collect Advent offerings that will be split to go and help out both the Food Bank for the Heartland and Lutheran Disaster Response. You can do this on your Give Plus app or you can send in a check. And with that, I think we are ready to begin. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening. And the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness. And shine within your people here. 
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us so that in union with all creation we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Our reading from tonight comes from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, As we prepare to enter into the good news of Jesus Christ coming into the world, we enter also into the life of Joseph. You know, the one who had been betrothed to Mary, but before they had even been together, suddenly she was found carrying a child that he knew wasn't his. And you have to admit 
being told that your betrothed is pregnant not with your baby would be a whole lot of unexpected circumstances to simply just get past the emotional baggage of ruined plans, knowing or at least thinking you knew the truth, which, of course, you didn't think was being told to you by your partner. It's kind of a whole lot. And you know, Joseph, being the upright guy that he was, even though he could have had Mary stoned to death, did not want to do this. Instead, he was just going to divorce her quietly. He had just made plans to do so. Yet, in the midst of all of this, suddenly, an angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream and confirms to Joseph the wildly crazy story that Mary had already shared with him, that this child was not from Mary's unfaithfulness to him, but a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. That not only was this child going to be the long-expected Messiah, in which Joseph and his people had been waiting for for a long time, but this child would be the one that saved all of God's people from their sins. So he, Joseph, of the house and lineage of King David, did what he was supposed to do. He answered the call. The call to become the father of this child, to raise him and name him Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, save us. So the tidings of comfort and joy brought to him in this dream by an angel of the Lord was enough. It was enough for him to take on all the other unknowns that were yet to come because they matched exactly what Mary had already told him, even if it sounded unbelievable when she told it. Now that an angel had also confirmed, he believed it. And he wanted to do exactly what God had told him to do. He answered with faith and trust in the Lord's ways over his own understanding. And he would indeed listen and do what God was directing him to do. I think that takes a whole lot of faith and resolve to listen to what God is telling a person to do, even if you know living out such a faithful response will likely be quite a bumpy adventure with challenges beyond one's own imagination. But yet still, it was a comfort and a joy in knowing that God was leading rather than Joseph. Speaking from personal experience, I'd say that can be true for all of us. That sometimes the things God calls us to do, perhaps despite one's own parents' wishes, which happened in my case, is quite a faith experiment. Because I know that when I chose to go to the Lutheran Service Corps and volunteer for a year and serve God and discern my calling— My parents were not happy. I had just graduated from college. You know where you go out and you get a real job and you take care of yourself. And instead, I had chose to go and serve others and live off of nothing. The same could have been said when it came to my actual calling to be a pastor. One of the biggest holdups for me were funerals. I just didn't think I could hold it together and offer words of hope to somebody else. And then my dad passed away. And when I was able to speak at his funeral, I decided right then and there that meant that I could indeed stand up and speak words of hope to others, even in their time of sorrow. Because God had called me to do that, and I trusted that God was going to be with me when those hard times would come. 
And that would provide me with enough hope and peace and courage to be able to do the same. Today, in the pronunciation that indeed Jesus was coming in the form of a tiny infant in which Joseph was to step up and claim as his own, he was told that his name would be Emmanuel, God with us. And even when times are so confusing, that is still a comfort and a joy that we can hold on to. To know that God was and is still with us through all of those hard times. Well, in one of my daily devotions that I recently was reading, there were some words from Philip Brooks in the hymn of, O Little Town of Bethlehem. And they were quoted there, and they still fit in nicely with this, too. So I wish to share them with you now. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. Dear friends, here we are. It's confusing times right now, but we know that the presence of the Lord is with us, and it too can be there to speak to us even through hard times and that of the unknown. May we choose to listen to God speaking to us in many and various ways. Sometimes it is our daily devotions, our time of prayer, our time of reading the word, and sometimes it's just talking with a good friend who encourages us, who reminds us that we are not alone. It's when the old words become words anew because we heard them and we took them to heart like Joseph did when the angel told him what was to be calls us to speak light into the darkness. It calls us not maybe to just go what sounds like makes sense, but what God is truly telling us to do. It might not always be something that's easy. A matter of fact, most of the good stuff is hard, but it is the good stuff where real joy bubbles up in us and fills us where we know that God is indeed at work, for it's not something we could do on our own, but something that God takes us and comforts us with. So may we respond with faith that Christ's presence indeed enters into our situations. It might not be smooth, it might not be easy, but may the word of God continue to speak comfort and joy to us that this will accompany us in this sinful world, in these times of confusion, paths untrodden where we don't know where we're going to be or what's going to happen. May we listen and follow God's way and know that we will not be alone, for we have received him. God is indeed with us. And that's not just good news for us. For all who hear and experience such good news, when it is lived out faithfully, others too will see the joy, will feel the comfort, and your witness is a power of God being truly present with us. So may we get ready as we prepare for the King to come again and make us anew. Amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. 